Hey everybody, it's Jeff Bloom of JB Bushcraft and more. Let's talk survivability in a shit it's a fan situation. When all the stores are wiped out, there's gonna be no food, no toilet paper, no paper towels, nothing. No guns, no guns, no ammunition, no BB guns, no CO2 for the BB guns. So what you wanna do, this is here is the Daisy 880. Pump action air rifle. This does not require CO2. This is perfect bug out rifle for small game in a bug out situation. All you need is BBs or pellets. You got rabbit, you got small game like squirrels, you got raccoon, you can even probably kill something fairly large with it, like a coyote or whatever. No, you're not going to kill a deer or a bear with it, no. But you can survive with this for eating small you could probably kill fish with this I have actually killed um, one time I shot a pickerel with a 22 pistol you have to just aim low underneath the fish where it's swimming and uh, t the reflection or deflect where they call that when the bullet is water same thing with a spear aim underneath the fish you got them that's why I killed, I killed the pickerel doing that. But anyway, yeah, this is the best air rifle. Not CO2, air rifle. And I got some other things to show you. And I got a target set up. This is a quiver I made with homemade arrows. And this is a PVC no heat bow that I made my survival bow. It's got a pear cord silencer and a turkey feather for a wind directional and the arrow knock is simple. It's just a small screw eye that I've crimped onto the pear cord string and, and I cut off the screw part and, and filed it of course. And I have a trigger, uh, not trigger, but a arrow release made from a screw eye that I filed and you just basically pull it, you put it like that, like this way. And this is a 40 to 45 pound bow. It's, the core is made from driveway, fiberglass driveway markers um, and duct tape. And this is adapted, adaptable for a fishing reel, for bow fishing. Oh, uh, go eat my arrows. Head off of this. Um, my homemade arrows are made out of hardwood dowels. This one here, if I can get the thing out. They're all made with sharpened spoon, uh, kitchen spoons that I've ground down to air out the the arrows to make them razor sharp. I used uh, it's not jute twine. I can't remember what I used, but uh, it's heavy duty twine and epoxy. I didn't use traditional. Traditionally, they, um, they use pine tar. The fletchings I made from duct tape. It's just a simple knock. Cut, uh, I cut out with a. I can't remember what I used, but I cut out a knock for the for the string. This one here has a piece of paracord from the inside of a paracord for the, this is for a the fishing. You put a swivel on this for the swivel from, from your fishing reel on here. And when you shoot it, you can reel it in. These things are razor sharp. For the demonstration, I'm not gonna be using these because they're too hard to replace. But I will be using these cheapy target Arrows that I picked up for I think 50 cents a piece at, when on clearance sale at, Wa at Walmart last year or year before. I've only got six of these arrows. I had eight of them and I lost two. That's why I don't want to use them because they're hard to make and I don't want to use them basically because of that reason. This little gem is my steel pipe slam shotgun. It's got a peep sight. 
it has a uh, there's a switch on here somewhere. I can't remember remember exactly where it is. But oh, I found it. And yep, it is working. It's been a few years since I've used this right this shotgun. It shoots uh, two and three quarter, twelve gauge shells. The name of it is. I made it in 2016. As you can see, boom, 016. The name of it is the Remnant 12. Instead of Remington, well, some of it wore off. Instead of Remington, it says Remnant. And it looks kind of like an assault rifle, I believe, I think. It's got stock here, to grab, and a stock on the part that you shoot, that the barrel that you slam, and it works fairly well. Did I shut the battery? Yep. Battery's been shut off. But we're going to demonstrate that next, but first I want to demonstrate my bow. And I'm not very good at shooting bows. So, I'm going to set the camera up so I can we can see the target a little bit better. I probably will not be using the, um, this thing, I just wanted to show it to you, but if you can see, I don't know if you can see this very well. Let me put this down. See the uh, the groove right there. There's a little groove right here. That's where you put your string, and you put when you pull it, you put your finger in here, and you put it this way on your string, and then you release. That's how you shoot it. But I'm not using this today. I'm just going to use my fingers. But let's go shoot it. Thank you, Tom. I forgot to thank you. Thank you, Tom, for your comment about my survival fishing video. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, it also has spoon handles, so you can shoot this left or right-handed. I took When I made my arrows, I just saved two of the spoon handles, and I taped them on, and then I wrapped them in leather. And I use that same material I put on my arrows to sew it up. I don't remember what the name of it is, but it's kind of like, it's like craft store stuff that almost resembles su uh, suet, not suet, sinew. And, uh, and the other thing I wanted to mention, if you want to learn how to make something like this, there's plenty of people on YouTube that can give you better instructions than I can. Uh, Nate from the Backyard Boyer is a really good one look into. Look him up. Uh, I'm going to shoot this off camera so you can see the target. Um, I don't know how, exactly how far I am. It's maybe 15, 10, or 10 yards, I'm going to guess. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and shoot this off camera so I can see the target and you can see the target. Always put your fletching so the off-colored one is facing out and underneath the little the arrow knock thing on the string. That's the best way, I think, anyway. Probably going to miss, but let's try it. But it didn't even shoot. I think I might have to replace the string. I think it's kind of it's kind of old. Maybe it's shrunk. Maybe we might not be able to shoot this today. It's been a while since I've shot, I've shot this. No, she's not gonna fire. It just keeps bouncing off. It's been probably two or three years since I've shot this thing. I think I had to replace the string. It's a bummer. I kind of wanted to show that to you. Oh well. We can. I can still show you the shotgun though. I know that works. This is how you load a 
I'll turn my peep sight on. What you do is you take the barrel completely out. This is made, the, the chamber is one inch, the barrel is three quarter. It takes a lot of work to make one of these. You gotta grind, you have to grind, there's a weld on the inside of the chamber. You gotta grind that out and it's a pain. You gotta use a big um, round file and just file the shit out of it. But you, what you do is you just, what I did anyway was I took my grinder and I chamfered, I don't know, if you see that groove right there, I chamfered that so I can get my fingers in there to pull the shell out. When these shoot, they expand. If you don't chamfer it, you have to use a pair of pliers to take it out, it's a big pain. But what you do is you put the barrel back into the gun. And then when you, you slide it in very carefully so you don't shoot on, fire on you. Look this up too. I mean, these are dangerous if you don't know what you're doing to make them. Uh, it, it, there's a lot to it. Anyway, when you shoot it, all you do is just basically pull this forward and then back real quick. I think I missed. I think I was re Let me go look. I didn't see anything happen. It comes right out, as I, like I told you. Yeah, I missed completely. That's, not, that's, that's embarrassing. I got one more shell. Two and three quarter. I don't know what size shot it is, but it's probably rabbit and squirrel. Try that one more time. Take two. I think I hit it that time. I'll bring up the target, or I'll take the camera down. That's even better. Did I hit it? Yep, I did. Nope, I didn't. I am horrible. No, I did hit it. Right there. The little pedal hole. Right there. Yeah, I did. Didn't hit. These aren't very accurate. They're most. They're mostly for point blank shooting at maybe ten feet, but they're made for mostly for home defense. I built it for hunting, but that was back when I was broke, like two or three years ago. 2016, actually, it's more than that, longer than that. It's four years ago, and I built it for hunting because I was broke and I didn't have a job, and I wanted to go out and shoot some some food. That Jeff Hill, Hill uh, that Beverly Hillbillies, you come to me and name Jed. Poor, million, poor mountaineer, barely kept his family there. That was me. But anyway, yeah, I guess I'm a horrible shot. But then again, that's not a very accurate gun. But yeah, this is a little short video on survival weaponry. And it's supposed to rain tomorrow. I'm going to redo the uh, fire in the rain video that I, I deleted accidentally from last week. And I'm going to do... Maybe I'll shoot this again. I'll leave the target out here. How's that sound? Well, I guess that's it for now. I suck. I lied. I can't leave a video like this and do that and this and... No, it's not me. I can't disappoint you. I got three more shells. I went back inside and grabbed some. I'm not going to look down the peep sight. That was my problem. I'm taking this off tonight. It unscrews. I have to use a screwdriver to take it off. I'm not going to mess with that right now. It's getting late in the day. Bam! Bam! I'm just going to blind shoot this. Here we go. Lock and load. 
and I nailed it. Baby. That one fell right out. Oh, look at that, what it did to that shell. Took the primer, almost popped it out. I think it's worth one more anyway, don't you guys? I think so. I know so. I know it rocked the world on that foam crate, or whatever you want to call it, that foam box. Nailed it! Well, it really does some devastation on them primers. Check that out. I got one more and that's it. I'm done. I'm actually wanting to extend this video a little longer because I got an experiment. I'm having problems loading, down, uploading videos. It takes a wicked long time to upload. I'm doing it with a cell phone. That's what I'm filming with. And I got, a, I got an app the other day to help me load faster. If I can find my last shell, let me see. Get empty my pockets out here. Here it is. And anyway, I got an idea if it works. It's an invention I'm working on to help speed up the process of loading. The app I'm using is helping load it faster, but I want to do a test to see if I can make it load even faster. I'm not going to tell you what the invention is, because if it works, I'm going to patent it and make some money on it. So I ain't telling you. It's one of those deals. Like the guy that made that little suction cup stand out of a piece of plastic and a suction cup for your cell phone so you can put your, your cell phone on the table and, and watch videos without using a coffee cup or anything to prop it up with. The guy made millions and it's a stupid invention. Wait, oh my God, I don't know if you heard that, but that was a two-pointer. You rocked it off this world. JB Bushcraft. Woo, baby. Sometimes you can, well, this one's, these are pretty damaged. But if you shot this out of a regular, regular shotgun, you can make uh, whistles out of those. For call, like, a lot of guys use them for calling geese. Anyway. That's my slam fire shotgun made from black steel pipe. Stick them up, bitch. It's a hold up. Bang! Subscribe for more.